Hi, everyone. I'm back. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but if you would believe me, it's been a necessary couple of weeks off. I needed a break. <laughs> I had some stuff to do, working on some things, and I just can't do everything. And so there's going to be some times when we may not have a video out one week, but I'm always thinking of y'all. And y'all are always clearly thinking of me because I get the emails and I get the comments and I am grateful for that. So I am back today. Um, my name is Rosalind. For anyone who has not been here before, I speak about all things motivational, health, anything has to do with doing better. Um, today, we're going to talk about how to lower your triglycerides naturally. And let me tell you, a lot of times people focus on LDL or... I don't even know if they even focus on HDL, but definitely triglycerides is the child that people ignore a lot of times, but it's very important to your health and could cause some problems with heart disease. So if you're having problems with your triglycerides being too high, we're going to talk about that today and get that down. Now, usually for me, I have problems with my LDL. I am happy to say I just had blood work done last week. And my LDL, although still high, has dropped. So that's a good thing. And I'm happy. My triglycerides have always been low, as I've said in past videos. And my HDL has always been high. So I'm good so far. I'm good. And my doctor doesn't seem to be too concerned. But she is sending me to get a, what is it called? A CT something scan. Cardio cardiac scan. Now, the thing with that test is that test is used. like. Say, for example, and some of you that have LDL issues need to listen up. So with your LDL, if, you're, if you believe that, like, for example, your LDL is high, but your HDL is high and your triglycerides are low and you don't want to get on statins, in order to prove that you don't have any type of blockages because of your LDL, this is a good test to take. The only downside is that you have to pay out of pocket and um, insurance usually doesn't cover it. But from what my doctor says, out of pocket is usually around no more than $150. Now I know everyone doesn't have that, but I would rather spend that money and not have to get on statin rather than to, you know, not take the test, get on statins and suffer from all the side effects of statins. So I'm just saying, talk to your doctor about it you know, taking that test. A lot of times they will not bring that test up. I think the, t the doctor I have right now, who I love to death, is she may be the only one that has brought it up. Everyone else is like statin, statin, statin. Now she has talked about statins, but when I pushed back on the statin, she said, okay, well, let's take this test and see if, you know, if you don't have any major blockages or anything in your arteries, then we're good. You know, we know that your, your LDL being higher is not affecting your health. That's all I want to know. But also another thing that she mentioned that I um, want to talk about briefly before we get into the triglycerides is, you know, when she, cause she knows, she knows I don't do statins, but she mentioned that there's a shot that you can take to get your cholesterol down and it's not statins. I have not looked into it yet, but I'm going to ask her what it is and research it and bring it back to you because I'm curious myself what the side effects are versus not the side effects and how is it compared to a statins. So I will get back to you all regarding that. That may be my video next week because I said I wanted to talk to her about that, like get the name of that drug that she was talking about. Now, I don't love shots, but I will take a shot. That that shows that how much I don't want to do statins. The fact that I will take a shot <laughs> before I will take a statin. If it's a shot that's not a statin and doesn't have crazy side effects. So I'll get back to you on that. But anyway, back to triglycerides. Um, I know some of you have looked at your blood work and your doctor may have told you to try your triglycerides are high. For those who don't know what's considered normal versus high, I'm going to share that with you. If your numbers are less than 150 milliliters, milligrams, excuse me, per deciliters, then you're in the normal range. My triglycerides this time was 86. I've seen it lower. I've seen it at like 75. So I was kind of surprised that mine was up a little bit, but I'm keeping my eye on that. But I don't drink, but there's other things that cause it. Borderline high is 150 to 199. Uh, high is 200 to 499. And anything over 500 milligrams per deciliters is very high. 
and you need to worry, like seriously worry about that. Let's talk about some risk factors for high triglycerides. I have a list in front of me that I'm going to be referencing because there's no way I'm keeping this in my head. Um, so number one is excessive alcohol use. If you are a drinker uh, and you like the, you know, you like to get down with the drinking a lot, you need to bring it down a little bit. Bring it down. <laughs> Same with um, lower um, HDL and high LDL. The drinking thing affects all of that. So that is definitely something you want to keep track of. And I'm sure if you're drinking like that, it's affecting other things in your body. So uh, in moderation, as I always say, everything in moderation. Um, if you have a family history of high cholesterol, that you know could be definitely a factor that may be beyond um, not getting on something to get your cholesterol down. We don't want people dying here. You know, we want you to be healthy. I always tell people, be careful with statins, but if you have to get on something, just research everything you can do before the statins, like this shot thing that we're going we gonna to revisit this shot. Because I was really curious when, as soon as I said to her, you know, I'm not getting on statins. She said, no, 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 there's a shot you can take to get your cholesterol down. I was like, oh, now you're going to tell me that now. <laughs> You got to push the docs against the wall sometime to get some information out of them. But at least she mentioned that. So, anywho. Okay, so on with it upward. Liver disease, or if you have kidney disease, that can uh, make you at an increased risk for high triglycerides. Some medications, such as diuretics, hormones, um, beta blockers, estrogens, um, retinoids, steroids, some immunosuppressants, um, and some HIV medications. So, be mindful if you're on any of those type of medications that that could cause your triglycerides to be higher. I would hope that your doctor would bring that to your attention, but if not, I'm bringing it to your attention so that you know this. You know, sometimes they just don't share. Other risk factors for high triglycerides, menopause. I just found out that I am officially in menopause, so that may be a reason why my triglycerides have gone up slightly. Still low, but have went up slightly. Um, Obesity. Also, obesity can affect your triglycerides. Smoking can affect your triglycerides. Thyroid disease can affect your triglycerides if your thyroid isn't functioning correctly. I actually had thyroid um, blood work done and my thyroid is normal from what my doctor says. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's good. Just, just let's make sure. Um, uncontrolled diabetes um, can cause high triglycerides as well. And of course, this causes problems all across all of your cholesterol levels is a diet high in sugar and simple carbohydrates. Definitely have to keep those to a minimum and be eating better than worse. I say 80-20, try to do good the 80% so that the 20% you don't feel so bad. So let's talk about how to lower your triglycerides naturally. Um, I would say number one, exercise regularly, aim for 30 minutes of exercise a day, maybe four to five days a week. I tend to exercise around six days a week and I exercise for, I exercise hardcore probably around 30 minutes of the almost four, between 45 and 60 minutes that I do a day. Cause I want some of the movement to be really fun and I want some of the movement to be you know, serving a purpose. And I realized that the older I get, um, I need to step up my exercise. Walking isn't enough. It's just not, you know, I walking is good. Don't stop walking if you are a walker, but like switch it up, do some weight training, squats, you know, things that build muscle in your body, because that's important as you get older, you know, you want to keep your bone health up. So, you know, just, please do it. <laughs> please, please exercise. I know, I, I, I feel you on the, ooh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard some days, but I do force myself to do it. And I've been very consistent since around April with my exercise. So I'm kind of proud of myself for that. And I feel better. And I, um, it helps when I'm not eating right. <laughs> like I had ice cream yesterday. So yeah. Anyway, during haagen the Dolce de Leche, whew, that caramel ice cream would get you every time. But anyway, that on went upward to the next thing of why to be avoiding sugar and refined carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates, since the sugars and foods made with white, white uh, bleh, and foods made with white flour or fructose can increase triglycerides. So we want to be careful 
with how much sugar and how much simple carbs you're taking in. I actually made a banana bread for someone. And when I tell people, I don't use white flour in my banana breads. I use white whole wheat flour. And um, that banana bread be slamming and it's good and it's good for you. So there's always an alternative. And it's not heavy like whole wheat flour. I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't like whole wheat flour because it's heavy. White whole wheat flour is bomb and it tastes good and it's good for you. So move on over to that side and do better. Okay, another thing you can do is to lose weight. I think if you exercise regularly, avoid the sugars as much as possible, you'll naturally start to lose some weight. I struggle because I know that sometimes I'm just not eating something right, or I maybe have more calories than I should have. You know, just look in the mirror and know and admit that sometimes you're not doing right, and that's why your weight is not moving like you want it to move, and then it'll start to move. Choose healthier fats. I talked about this last week too with the HDL. So trade the saturated fats found in meats for um, healthier fats found in plants and good oils. Like instead of red meat, try fish high in omega-3 fatty acids. Talked about this last week. Mackerel and salmon are great for that. Avoid trans um, fats or foods with high hydrogenated oils or fats. <laughs> And as we spoke about earlier, you know, we're definitely going to limit that alcohol intake, right? Yes. Okay. So for those people that are doing that, but want a little more kick, there are some natural medications that you can take for lowering triglycerides. Um, one of them, of course, is fish oil. I use fish oil and I truly believe that the fish oil is the reason that my HDL is as high as it is. I've been on fish oil for years and I believe that if you get a good fish oil that I think I use nature's nature made. Nature's made. Nature made. I use that one. I buy it at Costco in the bigger bottles. Um, it seems to be working, so I stick with it. I know there are some that don't have good quality. So I'm very particular about which ones I use, and I like nature made stuff, so I stick with nature made fish oil. Um, niacin can help lower your triglycerides too. Be mindful and be careful with it. Talk to your doctor about it. Um, make sure you have a doctor that is okay with these alternatives. You know, like when you're trying to get stuff down, like especially for triglycerides, niacin is good for triglycerides. Also, another one is red yeast rice. Red yeast rice helps lower um, cholesterol. I used it temporarily years ago. I don't know why I went back. I didn't go back to it. I think because I associated with triglycerides and I didn't have a problem with my triglycerides. I've read that it may be good for cholesterol overall. But the thing about it is to be careful because it can also have um, some of the same side effects as statin. So beware, talk to your doctor about it. I do know some doctors that have recommended um, red yeast rice. So just talk to your doctor about it. But definitely don't, do not mix niacin and red yeast rice together. Do not take those at the same time because that can cause issues, definitely. So it's like, you got to pick one. <laughs> but the fish oil you can take with either of them, but don't take the niacin and the red yeast rice together. So anyway, I hope that this information was extremely helpful for you if you're having issues with your triglycerides. Please let me know if there's anything else you want me to research or want me to speak on. And please subscribe if you not, have not already subscribed. And please have a great week. I will see you all next week.